I'm Dr. Ken Landau. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about Versinio. Versinio is a drug for advanced or metastatic breast cancer. It's not chemotherapy in the traditional sense, but it is a chemical and it is a therapy. It was approved by the Food and Drug Administration in September of 2017 for women whose tumors on the surface have receptors for hormones. So those cells are stimulated by estrogen or progesterone and the cells are negative for another chemical known as HER2. Now this drug is given in women who have failed endocrine therapy, who have advanced or metastatic tumors, and it's given either in combination with an aromatase inhibitor, a drug like letrozole, also known as Fazlodex, or Arimidex, or one of those, or it's given in combination with Fazlodex, in those women who failed endocrine therapy, or it could be given by itself in women who not only have failed endocrine therapy, but failed chemotherapy as well. The company advertises that it's the only drug in its class that can be taken daily. Well, actually, twice a day. The other drugs in the class, Kiskali and Ibrantz, have to be taken for only 21 days a month. Is there any benefit of 21 days worth of therapy of one drug versus every day on another? At the present time, that doesn't seem to make much difference as far as outcome is concerned. Now, breast cancer, obviously, is a very important disease. This year, more than 250,000 women will be diagnosed as having breast cancer, and the death toll is going to be in excess of 40,000 women. Most of the tumors, 70 to 80 percent of the tumors, are hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative. And that's relatively good news because the other kind of tumors don't seem to respond very well to any kind of chemotherapy. But at least here we have some good news. Now, how do we take the medicine? How is Versinio taken? Well, it's taken at a dose of 150 milligrams twice a day in those women who are going to combine it either with the aromatase inhibitor or the Fazlodex, but in those women who are going to take it as sole therapy, it's taken at a dose of 200 milligrams twice a day. Now, it comes in 150 milligram and 200 milligram pills, obviously, but it also comes in 100 milligram dosage and 50 milligram dosage for people who have too many side effects at the higher dose, the standard dose. So there's cut down doses. Unfortunately, the cut down doses really haven't been well studied and we don't know what the long term effect is, whether they're going to be effective or not. Well, let's take a look at some of the evidence behind Versenio and see if it's really a good pill. Well, Versenio, looking at treatment of postmenopausal women, and all of these drugs are used basically for postmenopausal women. If we look at postmenopausal women who have failed the initial therapy, women who have visceral metastases to the liver and other places, and half of the cases, and to the bones in at least a quarter of the cases, let's combine Versenio and Famara versus the femora by itself. And let's look at what happens. Well, what's the likelihood of progression of the disease? The progression rate is 40%. So four out of 10 women taking the Versenio and the femora are going to progress. It will progress in about 70% of women who are just taking the femora. If we look at the time it takes to progress, it's going to be about 28 months in the women who are taking combined therapy versus only about 15 months in women who are taking just the Femara. So it would seem that the progression-free survival is better with Versenio and an aromatase inhibitor. And if we look at overall the response to therapy, either complete response or partial response, it's going to be about 55% in women who are taking the combination versus about 40% in women who are taking just the Femara. Well, let's look at the Versenio plus the Fazlodex, women who might have a little more advanced disease. Still, women who have visceral metastases, about half of the cases, bone metastases, about a quarter of the cases. What's the likelihood of progression on therapy? It's 50% in women who are taking the Versenio and the Fazlodex versus 70% in women who are taking the Fazlodex itself. So again, we don't have any cure. We have maybe a little stunting of the progression. 
the time it takes for progression is about 16 months in people who are taking the combination versus about nine months in women who are just taking the FASLADEX. So again, if we look at the combination of complete and partial responses, it's going to be about 50% in women with the combination versus only about 20% in women who are given just the FASLADEX. And now let's look at just taking the Fazlodex, I'm sorry, just taking the Versenio at the higher dose. So we're going to use it now as sole therapy. What's the likelihood of it stunting the disease? Well, again, here we have women who have more advanced disease. The metastases have been present, let's say, for about an average of two years. Now 90% of the women have metastases to the visceral organs, with half of those women having metastases to at least three sites. What's the progression-free survival here? Well, it's going to take about six months before the tumor starts to grow again. The overall survival for these women is going to be about a year and a half. Now, the Federal, the, the Food and Drug Administration granted priority review to Versenio. They called it a breakthrough status. But what that really means in practical terms is it was sort of rushed through the process without complete information because while progression-free survival sounds very good, what the goal of therapy is is to prolong overall survival. There is currently no evidence, let me repeat that, there is no evidence that overall survival is increased in women who are taking the drug. The drug comes with some side effects, some awful side effects. So while it's not chemotherapy in the traditional sense, it does have a lot of the same kind of side effects. So if we look at women who are taking this drug, they are going to have diarrhea, often whopping diarrhea, severe loose stools that can lead to dehydration. And that's going to occur within the first month, lasts for about one or two months. Women oftentimes are even pre-treated before they get the drug. They're given Imodium or other medicines because they know that diarrhea is about to occur and in about a third of the cases the drug has to either be discontinued or continued at a lower dose. So this diarrhea is a major problem. They don't show that on these nice advertisements that show the women who seem to be quite serene. And not only can it cause diarrhea that lasts a couple months, often incapacitating diarrhea, but it can cause some problems with your bone marrow. It causes uh, low white blood cell count in about 40% of the women. It causes anemia in about a third of the women. It causes a low platelet count in about 10% of the women. It begins after about a month of therapy. Nausea is present in about 40% of the women abdominal pain 30%, vomiting 30%, a decreased appetite 65%, fatigue, two-thirds of the women are going to be fatigued. There's going to be hair loss and cough and joint pain. And there are going to be liver onset abnormalities. So if a person's taking the drug, we have to go and test for liver condition. The average till the liver becomes slightly abnormal is about two months. The blood tests, well, they're taken before you begin therapy and then every two weeks for a couple months, then every couple months, then as appropriate. And the drug can lead to blood clots either in the arteries or the veins, deep vein thromboses, pulmonary emboli, other kind of problems that can occur. It can interact with a lot of different drugs. So for instance, if you take the drug and you drink some grapefruit juice, you're going to have more toxicity because the drug concentration in the bloodstream is going to be increased because it, the, the grapefruit juice interferes with metabolism and so does clarithromycin and so does ketoconazole. On the other hand, if you're taking rifampin or tegretol, it's going to help get rid of the Versenio much more rapidly from the system. So you've got to be aware of whatever else you're taking and maybe with metformin too. If a woman is pregnant, well first of all, this is for mostly postmenopausal women. Now we can make it postmenopausal with some drugs, but it's important that women not take this drug if, there's, if uh, they're pregnant 
And if there's any chance that a woman is still having periods or potentially can become pregnant, a pregnancy test is necessary before therapy and then birth control pills or some kind of medicine that will decrease the likelihood of a woman becoming pregnant. Well, if you have kidney disease, mild or moderate, you can take the drug. And same thing if you have mild to moderate liver disease. If you have severe liver disease, you have to take a lower concentration, a lower dose of the medicine. The half-life of the medicine is about 18 hours. The drug fortunately enters the cerebral spinal fluid, so it gets to the brain. When it's metabolized in the body, most people think that it's broken down or drugs are broken down to inactive forms. In this case, two of the metabolites actually are very active, so that's good. It can be taken with or without meals. You should take it about the same time every day. You should swallow the pill whole. You shouldn't chew it or crush it or do anything else to it. Estrogen, the female hormone, seems to cause progression of breast cancer because it stimulates the ability of the cell to progress through the cell cycle and the Versinio inhibits some of the chemicals that are necessary for the cell to progress. So the Versinio works by stopping the cells, by causing them to get old before they can progress or causing them to die before they can progress. Now there are several other medicines that are on the market that do basically the same thing. One of them is Ibrance. It was approved in 2015. And then another one called Kiskali that was approved in March of 2017. That's struggling to hold on to a number two slot. They're not advertising it as heavily. And it has other kind of issues. It had a slow start to begin with. Then the Versenio came on the market in September 2017. And the question is, why all of a sudden are there so many products? Well, I'll tell you why. Because it's estimated by the year 2026 that this is going to be a $9 billion market. And that's what the drug companies are trying to get their share of. Is there any evidence that any of these three drugs, the Ibrance or the Versenio or the Kiskali, are better than the other drug? Do any of them increase survival? Well, actually, we don't have any evidence of that for any of the drugs. The difference between the drugs is the toxicity, and that's probably the reason you would pick one drug versus the other if you had to take one of these. It's on the basis of side effects and the cost. Well, Versenio is less likely to cause a severe lowering of the white blood cells that treat infection or combat infection. On the other hand, it'll give you a whopping case of diarrhea that goes on for a couple cycles. Kiskali, well, there's some question about it and arrhythmias. So it requires the electrocardiographic monitoring. Versenio is taken every day, and both Ibrance and Kiskali, they're taking, taken three weeks out of the month, and then you get a week off so that your blood cells can come back to normal. Any evidence of any benefit specifically with one of these drugs? Well, again, let me repeat that in spite of all of the advertising, in spite of everybody talking about progression-free survival, well, yeah, that's good, but everyone in the oncology community seems to agree that progression-free survival has nothing to do with overall survival. And as a matter of fact, in the study, and it wasn't a good study, and it wasn't even meant to show overall survival. It was on Ibrantz, and it was called the Paloma 1 study, and it did not show that women who took the drug actually lived longer. All it does, all of these drugs do, at the present time, all the evidence we have, is that they can increase the progression-free survival. So, what do we know about once you start taking the drugs? Well, when you start taking the drugs, it seems to be a very rapid decrease in progression over two or three months. And then if we look at the curves of women who are just taking the aromatase inhibitor or the Fazlodex versus the aromatase inhibitor and the Fazlodex plus the Versenio or plus the Ibrance or plus the Kiskali, it seems that the curves don't change. So the first two or three months, there's a big change a radical change. After that, 
don't have any good evidence. Now, Versenio is being studied in the women who are HER2, HER2 positive. Remember, up till now, it's HER2 negative. Well, Versenio was tested in lung cancer. The drug company wanted to promote it as a really good choice for lung cancer. Unfortunately, in 2017, the study flopped. It is not good for lung cancer. Well, question always is with these drugs, how much do they cost? Patients are insulated to some extent because the drug companies give these cards out so that you can get the medicine without much of a copay. But if you wanted to plunk down cash for four weeks, not a month, four weeks, the drug costs $427 a day. $427 a day. And it doesn't make any difference whether you get 50 milligram, 100 milligram, 150 milligram, 200 milligram, all costs the same. $427 a day cash. That's a lot of money. Well, if the cost of the drug is on the basis of its production, can you buy four times as much milk for the same price? Can you buy four dozen eggs for the same price as one dozen egg? Well, certainly when you talk, when you talk about Versenio, that's indeed the case. Now, you have to take other medicine, as I said. You have to take uh, an aromatase inhibitor medicine like Famara, sold as Letrozole, or Arimidex. That's relatively cheap. A month worth is going to cost, for the generic variety, about $10, $20 for the whole month. On the other hand, if you get the brand name, it's going to cost you about $20 or $30 a day, so significantly more. Fazlodex, well, that's only given once a month after the first month of therapy. That's an injection. That's going to cost about $2,000 a month. So what's the bottom line? The bottom line is that breast cancer is a significant problem. And now we have three new players in the game. And unfortunately, in spite of all of the advertisements, in spite of all of the serene surroundings, oh, you're attending the athletic game, or you're attending, hey, these drugs have lots of side effects. You might be on the toilet for a significant period of time, or you might be fighting an infection. And do we have any evidence of overall survival? Is there any specific benefit? Well, at least at the present time, no, and they don't even advertise that there is because there's no evidence that they prolong overall survival. Are they going to help in the long run? Well, we just don't know. The studies haven't been done. They haven't been given enough time. The drugs were rushed to the market before we know all that much about them. Is there any difference between the Versenio and the Ibrantz and the Kiskali? Well, again... The difference is in the cost, the difference is in the side effect profile. Anyway, this is a depressing area, but at least there seems to be some hope on the horizon. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.